was also a dead man lying in the front yard. He was face down in the grass, an axe still embedded in his back. Nothing wrong with dating. Y'all been dating. Nothing wrong with drinking and using Snapchat either. But it's when you add all of these three things together, that's when you have a horror story. And with that being said, today we have three true horror Snapchat stories animated. And at the end of this mug, I'm gonna share my own horror story for you guys. <laughs> and this one's bad. So bad, I've recorded it three separate times for BHD story times and deleted them every time. Cause I was like, this is, this is too slutty. But yeah, uh, if you guys want to check out that story, make sure to wait to the end of the video. Let's do this. Definitely a horror story. <laughs> this all happened a few months ago when I met Veronica Ooh, at a mutual friend's house party. Yeah, we hit cool. it off immediately as a beer pong team. So she gave me her Snapchat and we spent the next week exchanging videos. Hell yeah. At first, it was casual. Mostly memes and just videos of whatever we were doing at the time with goofy filters over it. Like, I sent Veronica a snap of me cooking breakfast and then slapped a psychedelic lens over my face that made me look like a hippie. Very much like a hippie. After about a week, Veronica started sending me flirtier snaps. Yeah, flirtier Nothing snaps. wild, just stuff like blowing me a kiss at the end of a video, video or using a heart emoji filter. Um, I was vibing with that because Veronica was gorgeous. Dark hair, dark eyes, and slim. Like We'd slim. probably exchanged a hundred snaps before I saw the face in the background. I was laying on the couch playing Elden Ring when I received the snap. Hey Troy, what do you think of my new earrings? Veronica asked in a video. She was sitting at her kitchen table with some kind of pirate filter on. It added big fake gold earrings as well as an eye patch. Just as the snap was ending, I sat up. There was something in the background of the video in a shadowy way at the end of the kitchen. The snap was gone before I had a chance to think to screenshot it. It was hard for me to tell exactly what it was in the background due to the bad lighting and the filter, but it looked like a face on the wall. The face was ugly, oh, old, hell. but hard to make out in detail because it was dark. Don't go to it her was house. a man, completely bald, Ooh. with thick, hard features Ooh. and eyes that seemed to look right through you. His mouth was clenched shut. I thought there might even have been a red streak on his chin. I decided to snap Veronica back ASAP. Hey, did you recently install a creepy portrait in your kitchen? I asked. Creepy do was mean mugging me in your snap. I added an LOL filter and sent the message. Veronica got back to me immediately. Not sure what you're talking about, dudeski, she said while shooting Dude. a quick video tour of her kitchen. Well, you're weird, get but get out luckily of there. you're cute. I felt the blood go cold in my veins. Veronica's snap showed me the wall where I thought I'd seen the portrait of the man, but instead of a painting, there was a window. Hey, I'm being serious now, okay? I snapped back. I think a man might have been looking in through your kitchen window. Veronica looked nervous and a little angry in her reply. She didn't bother using any filters. Troy, if you're messing with me, that's not okay. Don't try to scare me. This latest video had Veronica walking around in her living room. All of her curtains were open and I could see the night sky clearly around her house. I also noticed a shadow outside in her yard. Oh, he's black. This time, I was fast enough to screenshot the end of the video no. and I sent it back to no. Veronica. He's black. She sent me back a chat instead of a video. Ooh, she's about okay, to I'm freaking out now a little. Yeah, she, yeah, she's she wrote, freaking out. Can you come I love over? it when they freak out. Yeah, I've been now, hoping for an invitation for your, a while, but not load. like this. Before I could reply, I got a notification that she sent over a video. I opened it to see her clearly panicked Veronica rushing down her hallway. Troy, I saw somebody outside. 
They limped between the willow tree out front and went around the side of the house. Bet you I'm not sure, the but there style. might have been Don't two shadows me. out there. I chatted her back. Hey, here's my FaceTime. Give me a call. Never risk your life for a woman you have never slept with unless it's like a family member. Some of them you might want to let them go to. You know what I'm saying? But... <laughs> and I'll stay online with you. She called a few moments later from her bedroom. The lights were out, oh, and I could up. see from the screen's glow that she Veronica was up. crying. There's someone outside my room, mm. she whispered. I heard them trying to open the window. Troy, please, please, I'm so scared. Give me your address. Okay, I'll okay. come over there with- Just hold tight. I'm going to- And save you. Oh, they clapping the Someone cheeks. was pounding on Veronica's front door, hitting it hard enough to rattle the window. Yep, rattling all the, the way windows of her bedroom. vagina. I heard screaming Heat. or shouting. Heat. It was muffled and impossible to tell what I, they were I, saying. I, I don't do After that stuff moment, though. I, the knocking stopped, and there was silence. Sex then is bad. Veronica I don't screamed. Do that stuff. Before I could ask what was wrong, she swiveled her camera to point out of her bedroom window. Ew. A man was looking inside, the same man I'd spotted in her kitchen window. Go beat him up. His face was pale and up close, clearly streaked with blood on his bite. chin and cheeks. Why does he have Veronica ripped the curtain shut and began hyperventilating. Hey, hey, listen. Good luck. You need to stay quiet. Stay hidden. Barricade. Well, look at the bright side, ladies. This is what happens when you date a guy who can't fight. I, you know what I mean? If I'm talking to a chick, man, and I ran into a situation like that, I, again, I, I don't know. I might, I, I'd probably rob the guy. I'm gonna need his stuff, man. I'm gonna need payment for this. I, Your bedroom door put something heavy against the window, too. I would give his stuff then back you need later. To hang up this call and. No, please. Give it out to Liam Neeson's breathing speech. Harder. Don't leave me. Just for a minute. I promised. You need to call 911. I'll call them too to make sure we get through. Snap me your address and I'll be on your way over to you. Should have been over there. Please hurry. Veronica hung up and I instantly got a notification in the chat. She's bone, bro. I was already on my way out of the door, well sliding my on boots on and my jacket. Get back up when on I Tinder. connected with 911, the dispatcher confirmed that they were already on the line with Veronica. Mm. Since she was talking to a professional, I sent her a quick Snapchat video instead of FaceTiming. Hey, I'm on my way. So are the police. You'll be okay. I said, climbing into my truck. The cops beat me to Veronica's house. There were two squad cars parked at the curve when I pulled into her driveway. There was also a dead man lying in the front yard. That's he good. was face down in the grass an axe still embedded in his back yeah. near the top of his spine. Yeah. As I got closer, I saw the man was bald and very pale. Mm. There was one officer Super standing near the corpse, talking into her radio, and two more That's at the front female. porch of the house, trying to calm Veronica down. That's not a woman. The first officer started to step to block me, but Veronica caught sight of my approach and came sprinting down the steps. She jumped into my arms and clutched me tight, sobbing so hard I couldn't make out what she was saying. Yeah. I hugged her back, but my attention was on the body in the yard. I saw the first cop lean over to shine a light in its face. The corpse was definitely the man I'd seen peering into Veronica's window. Who took the out? stalker. The potential home invader. I doubted Veronica was savage and composed enough to put an axe into his back. So, who killed him? The answer became clear when more police cars arrived but stopped three houses down instead of at Veronica's. When I was finally able to get Veronica to calm down, I let a paramedic look over her while I walked down the street. This time, a cop did stop me at the edge of the yard. A crime scene technician was marking off an open door to the house with black and yellow tape. I was able to see a woman's body lying in the living room floor before they shuffled me away. The rest of the story came out in the paper that week. Veronica's neighbor, 
a middle-aged couple that just moved in, were brutally murdered the same night she and I were exchanging snaps. The wife died at the scene, but the husband was able to flee and most likely made his way next door to ask for help. Only that family was on vacation, so he moved to Veronica's house, creeping in the yard in case the killer was in pursuit, which he was. The man probably tried to get Veronica's attention quietly at first, then started pounding on the door when he realized he was being followed. He ran around to her window when she didn't answer. That's when the killer must have caught oh. up with him and planted an axe in his spine you. as the Damn. man tried to dash across the yard. Right in the spine. I know Veronica blames herself for not opening the door, I wouldn't but open how it could she have known that her stalker was really a victim? Besides, all that might have changed was the police finding three bodies instead of two. That's real, yeah. They probably would take out her too. It's a good thing she didn't open the door. Never open the door. Hey, you got it. This happened about a month ago, but I couldn't decide if I should tell it or not. I'm kind of a paranoid person and didn't know if I was going to deal with something like this again if I talked about it. But since it's been a month and nothing has happened again, I'll share it. English is not my native language, so bear with me if I sound weird. I'm a 22-year-old girl from Bulgaria studying art in another town. Art is good. I was back home at my parents' house for Christmas vacation. And this happened a little after New Year's. My parents' house is in a tiny village near a big town where I grew up. We moved into the village and now live in a two-story house. I was sitting one night in my room and watching some amazing horror stories by MJV Animations, <laughs> as I usually do. It was about two o'clock and I was immersed in a scary story, not knowing that I would be living in my own horror story real soon. It started with me receiving a notification from Snapchat that someone had added me. I was kind of confused, but I still opened it and saw that someone with the username Lappy789 added me as a friend. I now, Flappy. I want to explain why this is weird to me. I hardly returns. use Snapchat. I just have it on my phone for no reason at all. Lies. None of my friends used it since Instagram got the story thing. She's and we all started to use that instead. I have very few friends on Snapchat and none of them active on it. So yeah, really I don't think Snapchat that it was like someone that. I knew. And I don't even have my location on it or Bitmoji or whatever it's called, that I can give away my location or username to people nearby. What I don't even movie? know what that thing does, because as I said, I haven't been using Snapchat in a while. I also didn't have my username mentioned anywhere on my social media. Out of curiosity, I added Lappy789 and opened their profile to see if they had a picture or something that I could tell more about this person. There was nothing except their Snapchat score which was Just about seven. Is that good? I set my phone on the desk and started to rewind the video and listening to the parts that I missed while I was distracted by the phone. As I got ready to go back to the video, I got another notification. It was from Lappy789 again, and this time it was a snap. I opened it and it was a picture of grass taken with a flashlight. I, mean, I stared at it, all confused and then typed, what is this? Who are you? Lappy789 received it, then read it, but didn't respond. At this point, I started to ask all of my friends if it was one of them, or if they had given my username to someone, but they all said no. A few seconds later, another snap came, and now it was a picture of what looked like a red tile. Oh no! Curiosity took over me, and once again I texted, This isn't funny. Who the hell are you? Lappy789 saw my message, but, but didn't respond. The third snap came, and I was prepared to start screenshotting to show my boyfriend. It was a picture of what looked like a little doorknob, but I couldn't see anything more clearly. I failed to screenshot it first, so I had to replay the snap. When I was finally done, I went back to the third snap to take a closer look this time. 
Drops of sweat appeared on my forehead as I realized this doorknob belonged to our backyard gazebo. Oh, shit. At this point, I'm slowly grasping that this person is Snapchatting me from my backyard. And by the way, it's not so easy for someone to access our backyard as we have a tall fence. You would have to take your time and scout the place around to find a possible way to climb the fence. It would be even more difficult in the dark, which meant whoever this was had been looking around our house during the day to find a way to get in. I was utterly horrified and I didn't know what to do for a few moments. Then I stood up from my desk and ran to turn off all the lights. As my room got dark, I peeked through my window shades to see the backyard. It was very cloudy and a dark night, so I couldn't see anything. The fourth snap came, and like last time, I was ready to take a screenshot of it to my boyfriend, who hadn't yet seen my messages. When I opened the snap, I screamed in terror. It was a zoomed in snap of my window shade the one that he could see me gazing out of. Yeah, that is scary. I ran out of my room, not knowing what to do. For some strange reason, I didn't want to wake up my dad and tell him what was going on. My mom was sleeping downstairs on the couch, and I was upstairs. I tried to figure out how to open the super loud and screechy door to our terrace without waking up my parents. Even if I was scared, I still wanted to find the intruder who was pulling off this freaky prank to me. I battled with the door for about 30 seconds, but I managed to open it quietly and carefully stepped outside to look. I still didn't see anyone. I looked and I looked, trying to stay low as I could so that the snapper wouldn't see me. But I couldn't see anyone lurking in the backyard. I was coming down from the terrace when I received another snap from Lappy789. As I opened it, The blood in my veins ran cold. It was a picture of my mom sleeping on the couch, taken from inside the house. This freak was now inside my house. As shocked and terrified as I was, I rushed downstairs in complete panic. If only you would have told the parents. Dad, Dad, there's someone inside our house. Dad, call the cops. As I came downstairs, screaming frantically, my mom woke up and she saw our main door was wide open. It seemed like we forgot to lock the main door that night and my mom passed out on the couch without knowing the door was unlocked. My dad came out of the room and I told him everything while showing the snaps. My mom and I were both hyperventilating at this point. My dad called the cops and went out, taking his gun to scavenge the area. I don't do that. After checking everywhere, my dad came back inside and said that he didn't find anyone. The cops came, and they too inquired our neighbors and us about the whole incident, but no lead took place on the matter. I could hardly sleep that night. Every five seconds, I kept checking for new snaps from this unknown account, but Lappy789 was gone. I would have been relieved if Lappy789 stayed gone, but unfortunately, He didn't. When I woke up, I found a creepy text from the same account. It read, Had a nice time watching you sleep. Can't wait to see you soon. Goodbye. I immediately blocked the account. I've texted and called all my friends, begged them to confess if it was one of them, but they all said it wasn't them. I told my boyfriend what happened. He asked everyone he knew, but still nothing. We tried to find the account, but we soon found out that he had deactivated it. There was no one with the name Lappy789 anymore. I had deleted Snapchat and didn't think I'd ever use it again. The next day, I went outside to look around to see if the creep left something behind, and I saw footprints on a little muddy patch. My dad doesn't seem to believe it was the intruder's footprints, saying it was probably one of us, but I'm pretty sure they weren't ours. To this day, I still don't know who it was. I've asked everyone I know, but nothing has ever come out of it. I still wonder what their intentions were. Were they trying to scare me? 
Were they stalking me? Who were they? Possibly a combination How did they of both. find me? I wouldn't know. I just hope I never have to deal with them again. Now, as you guys already know, I live in Las Vegas, and back in my sluttier times, I just got done playing poker. Now, I go to the bar, I'm hanging out at the bar while I'm there, talking to people, telling people the story about how my best friend, way back in the day, I found out he was boning goats. I had to cut the friendship off after that one. I, I was like, you know what? We don't even have the same taste in gin and, and species, you know? And that's something I couldn't get over with at the time. So I'm hanging out at this bar and I run into these two Korean chicks. Now at the time I'd never been with a Korean girl, so it was on my bucket list. So when the chicks asked me to come back to their crib to watch movies, I'm thinking everything's going the right way, right? So I leave and then when we get back to the crib, another roommate comes out, right? Apparently I had like two more roommates. So we're all in the living room, we're watching TV. And a little bit into watching the movies, one of the chicks, the chick that I met at the bar, the first one, she's like, yo, you know, I want to show you something in the back room. So I get up, I go with her, we go to her room, and you know, one thing leads to another, you know what I mean? Like super fast, man. She was on me, like tax evasion on Wesley Snipes. I get, you know what I mean? I'm not doing nothing without no condom, so, you know, I got the condom, I put the condom on, and then I asked the chick, I'm like, yo, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> can't believe I'm telling people this. I'm like, yo, you got any lube? Like, you know what I mean? Cause you know, she was Korean and and good, good God almighty. Oh boy. So the chick is like, yes, I've got the stuff. Gets up, goes over to her computer desk or the office space and on the desk, it's like a bunch of drawers and stuff. So I'm like, oh, okay, she's gonna open up the drawer. That's where she got the, the liquids at, that with the lube and whatnot. Baby girl opens up her drawer and pulls out a big old rectangle thing of Luberderm lotion, right? And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm still not putting two and two together. I'm figuring, oh, okay, she wants to moisturize herself beforehand. Maybe she's ashy, it makes sense. Bruh, baby girl, so I didn't think nothing of it when baby girl, you know, pushed the thing to push the nozzle down and got like a got like a whole bunch of whole bunch of lotion on her hand. Now I'm not gonna lie, yeah, this this did mess me up when I saw it. I have PTSD still to this day. Oh god, I shit you not. Baby girl comes back over and she does this one. Oh, just a one wipe! A single wipe straight up! the middle of her, and I was like, yo, what? Wait, this can't be real life. You gotta be joking me. Oh, the horror. There's a true horror story. Double entendre, maybe even triple in some cases. And upon thinking about the situation, I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, I am the one with the condom on, so if anyone's gonna be on the wrong end of a yeast infection, you know, from lathering their loins up with lotion, it's definitely not gonna be me. That turned out to be the worst mistake I'd ever made in my dating life. You know, it was a horrible mistake. <clears throat> Stay tuned for the next animated Snapchat horror stories video I do. Yeah, I'm saying I'm gonna do another one right now and uh, I'm gonna tell the rest of the story at the end of that one because believe it or not, somehow it gets worse. So much worse. <laughs> well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. It's your boy Blast from Stage D, Twizzles.